and new father, Ryan Strom, to the show. Joining us from Toronto, Ryan, thanks so much for taking the time today. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me on here. So you literally just got off the ice in Toronto. Uh, we're curious, just how have you been adapting to this, obviously this crazy time and just trying to stay in shape? I know you mentioned your slide board that coach sent you is just over there on the side of the room as well. So what have you been doing? Um, I've been uh, able to do a lot of workouts, which is nice. I have a little gym here at the house and uh, uh, a nice big backyard space to do some, uh, you know, some movement activities and stuff, which is nice. And um, recently in Toronto, the rinks have opened up too, and I got my equipment now. So I've uh, been able to get back on the ice and kind of get back into the swing of things. So um, it kind of feels like summer training, to be honest with you. It feels like it's kind of like August ramping up for training camp type thing. But uh, uh, I'm pretty lucky that I've been able to have, uh, you know, my trainers close by and I have my brothers that I can train with. So we've been able to kind of keep it competitive and uh, stay in pretty good shape, to be honest with you. So I feel pretty good and um, I feel like I'm ready to play. So I've, uh, I, there's not much more I can ask for. So, Quinny, I was on the coaching staff in Bridgeport when Stromer joined us, coming from Niagara Falls in the OHL. Uh, he's a big personality. Young guy came in. He was already on the stereo, telling jokes, running the room. And uh, just let us know what it's like to have him in the locker room and how important it is to have a guy with uh, those intangibles just help everybody, especially the young guys. Yeah, well, obviously our sport is a game of emotion, and personalities are a big part of it. And you can't have all same personalities in the locker room. And – you know, one of the things that Ryan brings to the table on top of what you see on the ice is he's a great personality off the rink. Guys get drawn to him. You know, he's, uh, you know, it's a long season and there are some dark days and the long days. And, you know, during those times, you need people like Ryan with that great personality. And, you know, whether he's telling a joke or making fun of somebody, uh, you know, it certainly it makes for a potential long day into a little bit of a shorter day. And it certainly allows people to want to come to the rink a little bit more. So, you know, on top of what you see, what he brings on the ice is certainly an element to his game away from the rink that's very valuable. And uh, Stromer, you know, it was interesting just following your career the last seven years where you came in, top scoring guy, played that role right away with the Islanders. And then fast forward five years, I'm just wondering if you added or consciously thought about becoming a fighter for a little while, killing penalties, uh, checking as a centerman has to at points, just to elevate yourself back in the lineup into a scoring role. I've seen a lot of hockey players not willing to add those elements to their game and then just be out of the league. You, how did you do it? Um, well, I wouldn't say fighters necessarily on the resume. Let's just get that out of the way real quickly. <laughs> I'm fighting. We do not want him fighting. <laughs> <Yeah. nice belts. laughs> but uh, I've had a few, but no, I honestly just think it's a matter of uh, just earning the coach's trust. I think, uh, you know, when I was in Edmonton, I had McDavid and Drysaddle, so obviously I'm not going to be a scoring centerman there, so you kind of have to adjust. And um, When I got the opportunity to begin penalty killing and uh, take some more face-offs, I think it's just a matter of trying to find ice time, I think. You know, it probably took me a little bit longer than I wanted to to figure out that I kind of had to, you know, find those other elements. But um, I think just to, to have the coach's trust, especially what I have in New York now, I think uh, you're viewed in a different light as you get a little bit older. Um, you've been through the ups and downs. I think you're, you're able to play on the penalty kill. You're able to play – you know, up and down the lineup, I know, I mean, it was only last year where I was playing on the fourth line in New York for a little bit. So, um, you know, you got to be able to kind of play all those roles. And um, it's not easy. You know, it definitely, you know, kind of sucks at time as a player. You want to be the guy. But um, at the end of the day, it's about helping the team. And I think if the coach and the GM and um, the staff knows that you're willing to do what it takes to kind of help the team win and you have that personality that um, you just, that's just part of growing your resume and growing your toolbox and, um, that was something that my dad harped on, just trying to find those minutes and something I was able to, you know, fortunately be, be able to do. You mentioned a couple of things there that I just want to touch on quickly. How important is that adaptability? I mean, I know you said you've been skating in Toronto and it's kind of like summer skating, ramping up before you head back to a training camp to start a season. However, you're not really starting a season. You're, you're really hitting the ground running where games are really important. So how are you going to be able to make that switch mentally? And are you already kind of starting to, to try to get in that mindset? Um, to be honest, it's a great point. I think it's, it's kind of impossible, really. I, I mean, it's impossible to emulate a summer workout knowing that you're going to have a chance to be in the playoffs if you, you, have, you win your playing games, right? So it's a very, very unique situation. But I think that's what training camp will be good for, I think. Um, we have a team group chat and guys are really, uh, really energetic, really enthusiastic and I'm uh, really excited for our opportunity. I think, you know, sometimes when we talk about this whole pandemic and the stuff going on, I don't think people realize how hard it is to play in the playoffs. I haven't played in the playoffs, in, I think four seasons. So uh, we have a great opportunity here. So I think that 
once we all get back together in New York, we get training camp going. I think that's when things will really ramp up and um, the competitive spirits will be flowing. But um, I think for e each individual guy, I think the way I'm kind of treating it is just do it as much as you can to get ready physically. Um, the mental aspect and the team aspect will come in training camp. And um, I think once you see everyone together in training camp, McQueen blowing his whistle uh, as loud as he possibly can, that'll put guys uh, right in the perfect frame of mind. We'll get to the Quinnyisms a little bit later. Um, one thing we like to do on the show is we like to highlight memorable moments from the season up until the stoppage point. And one of those most memorable moments was the mom's trip, in particular your mom, reading out the lineup uh, before the game. What was that experience like for you? I know moms and dads, but moms especially, a lot of players talk about how uh, how much of a role they play in helping them with their game and driving them to practice growing up and stuff. So, so what was that moment like for you? Yeah, uh, Cooney really, uh, eight, I think I aged five years sitting there when she was reading the lineup, I think. I've said this before, like, when you see your two worlds clashing, your mom who's been there your whole life making you meals and, you know, kind of a mama's boy type thing, and then you're in your hockey atmosphere, you're kind of a guy's guy, and then your mom's in the middle of it reading a lineup, giving you a kiss and a hug, you're kind of like, it's just too much to handle. But uh, honestly, I think uh, aside from my personal, not, not embarrassment, but my anxiety aside, I think, um, for my mom to be able to have that experience and for the Rangers to be able to do what they do for the parents. I mean, like every single thing that the, they do on the mom's trip and the dad's trip is first class and second to none. And um, I know all of that is just a great memory in itself, but for her to be able to read the lineup, I think, you know, that's something that she tells everyone. I think it's a conversation starter for her friends and um, for, for parents, it's a little bit of a, not unrewarding because they're seeing their kids live their dream, but they're just kind of in the background. So when she got to have a little bit of her moment, I think, you know, really meant a lot for her. I know what she's done to get us to this point. And um, I remember her going back to work just so we could play minor hockey because it was so expensive. So just little things like that come to my mind when I see her get to do that. And um, it, it's certainly a moment she'll never forget. And, um, you know, a special moment that I, I think very few, if any, players can ever say they've got to experience. Strover, I just wanted to ask you about playing with Panarin. Is he the kind of guy when you get off the ice and you're on the bench, is he all over you, challenging you? Is he a guy that wants to talk about every detail about the shift or is he just chill? Um, he's honestly pretty positive. I think uh, um, surprisingly enough for how skilled he is and how, uh, how creative he is on the ice. Like when things aren't going well, he often gets back to the basics. He'll sometimes say like in broken English, you know, guys, let's just chip it in or let's get it deeper. You know, let's just play in the offensive zone. So, um, you know, he's probably a little more simple when things aren't going well, but I think when things are going well, he's always trying to, you know, find more plays. He kind of tells you what you're thinking or what he sees out there. And um, just a special talent. I mean, he's challenged me so much. I think he's made me so much better, uh, probably more so in practice, just being ready every practice. Like he, he's out there, he's ready to snap it around and make plays and he wants you to be ready. He, if you miss a pass, he's going like, he puts his arms up at you. If, you're, if your saucer pass isn't flat, he's kind of letting you know. So um, I think that's his way of kind of challenging his line mates and his teammates. And during the game, he's pretty positive. He wants to win. He's very competitive. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great teammate. I think Quinny would agree that, uh, you know, his energy and his, uh, I guess, his enthusiasm kind of rubs up on everyone. And when you see a guy with his amount of talent kind of, you know, battling for pucks and doing what he does, I think it, uh, you know, is uh, contagious throughout the lineup. And he's, uh, he's certainly a very special player. And obviously he's been great for me. But I think so many guys in our team, I think, have grown so much from a guy like him just having him around every day. Absolutely. And uh, last one from me, Stromer. Uh, we've gotten the opportunity here to meet uh, Quinny for several weeks in a row, and we think we know almost everything we need to know about him at this point. But what can you share with us that we don't know about David Quinn? Well, I'm not going to embarrass him too much. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, after he brought my mom in the dressing room and all that stuff. But um, I think in just a little bit of uh, not not off topic, but I think something you might not see every day is just I think Quinny is very understanding as a coach. And I think, you know, it's really refreshing when you go into a video room and um, you're not getting beaten down every day. I think there was a lot of times this year when you probably could have had a pretty ugly video, but he goes, you know, there's 82 games and you're not going to bring it every night. You're not going to have it every night. And um, you're not going to feel great every day. And that's just the part of pro hockey. And I think it's that understanding when the coaching staff is able to do that, or if they're, for example, even when I have a bad game and they're able to call you in and just have a conversation with you rather than, not talk to you at all. I think it's just those little things that go a long way within an individual and in the team aspect. And, um, you know, it's like I said, something as simple as just not giving you 
you know, too much, uh, too much grief for a bad game and just kind of rush, brushing it off and getting back to work. And I think some coaches can get caught up in the day to day, but I think when a coach is able to be a little more personal and have that side of it, I think it, uh, like I said, it goes a long way and it makes coming to the rink that much more enjoyable. Stroma, real quick, on a personal note for you, as we mentioned, you're a new father. So some silver lining in this whole thing. You've gotten to spend a lot of time with your new little baby. How was your first Father's Day, and are you just completely smitten? Yeah, it's uh, it's been crazy. The first five weeks have been nuts, I think. Uh, getting back to a normal sleep schedule has been kind of nice the last few weeks, but uh, it's just the greatest feeling in the world to be a father, I think. Um, you know, just the little things, just to see her. She's only five weeks, but starting to smile and starting to react a little bit, and um, just, just so amazing to see, you know, your own little child. And I know how much my parents did for me as a kid. And, uh, I just hope I can be the half the parents they were. So, um, yeah, it's been a silver lining in this whole quarantine. I, I wish the baby was born maybe about 12 weeks ago. So I had something to do for the first eight weeks of quarantine, <laughs> but, uh, you know, all in all, it's been, uh, it's been a great experience. And, um, it's also been really nice for me just to be able to, you know, with all the training and the skating ramping up to have a little bit of an outlet and come home and, be able just to play dad for a little while and um, enjoy that side of life too has been, uh, you know, amazing for me to learn. And um, it's a challenge and it's, it's difficult, but it's uh, also one of the most rewarding things so far in life. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again to both you and your wife. And thank you so much for joining the show today. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on.